All right, so continuing on this, this attempt to bring finish, you can also find the, um, the shapes that you're carving out. You want to just always be kind of critical, not just of the value squinting, but of the leftover shape. So I can see that the nose isn't quite big enough. And so I can simply extend it. And remember, you're painting at a slightly lower opacity, so you're never, you're never obliterating the color underneath as you paint. And what makes it painting is that we're not drawing lines. Instead, we're kind of sculpting shapes with our marks. And you notice I'm still just using the, the paintbrush and the option key to steal colors. I'm not ever erasing. Instead, I'm just painting over, you know, with a, a different color. But because we're at a lower opacity, every time I do that, it just builds more texture. And that gives a more satisfying surface. So if I've kind of set the level of finish with this eye and I'm working away from it, you have to kind of give yourself permission to be a little looser. And for those that are kind of painting aficionados, the American painter to look at for this kind of virtuoso technique of kind of quick definition of form is John Singer Sargent. So I'll, I'll risk opening up a web browser just so I can show you some Sargent quickly. <laughs> and you can see some John Singer Sargent's at some beautiful portrait paintings at the San Antonio Museum of Art. Now, if you're going for hardcore detail, then you just want to take your, your brush back up to 100% opacity, like if you're working on the edges. You're not going to make much progress doing that at just 20% or whatever it is. And then ultimately, there is a final finishing approach that I want to show you, and that's under your brush settings. For shape dynamics, you can have pin pressure. That's just fine. But then you can also have, um, let's see, the opacity. I don't do this very often, but let me see if we can set that up somewhere. But you'll see that there are brushes. Where, here we go. So the soft round pressure opacity or the hard round pressure opacity brushes. These are ones where the harder you press, the more opaque it gets. And that can be really helpful for final smoothing. And you can mess even with these brushes and try to give them some texture. But you're going to be a little bit more limited in the options. We can even try something like scattering if we want to build up texture really quickly. It's almost like a, um, 
a foam brush you know, technique. And the harder we press, the more opaque that color will be. Now, I don't go for these techniques a whole lot because they can start to look very digital. And all the marks aren't showing the direction of the paintbrush. Rather, they're just the, the design of the, the um, brush itself, right? But for like little finishings at 100%, they can be very helpful. Then I'm going to go back to my... What's nice about Photoshop, it remembers your last few brushes. So I'm just going to go back to my um, previous state. Keep working with that, maybe at a slightly higher opacity. All right. So let's look at that sergeant. Kind of show you what I mean. So from a distance, his paintings look very structural. But when we look at them up close, let's see if we can get a high res version here. They're actually done with kind of as few paint strokes as possible. So kind of really nice use of paint where each stroke actually models the form. And that, that is a good inspiration, at least for me, for, for what digital painting can be, that makes it feel like it's not digital at all. <laughs> so for instance, I could take that sergeant, put it right there, and then kind of overlay it. <laughs> match up the kid's eye with the dog's eye. This is stealing sergeant's brilliance, right? <laughs> yeah, pin light seems to be the best option. Oh, there we go, soft light. And so you can see how that kind of intentional movement of the brush can help give it some life. And that's adding compositing into your digital painting, which I am kind of a big fan of. But that's all kind of special effects and things you might do for your final project. Here we're just keeping our, our digital painting pretty basic. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it soon. <laughs> oh, but I, I like what that compositing did. Just gave it a little bit of extra oomph. There you go. The oomph. The oomph factor. And you can just keep building as many layers of paint as you think are necessary. But by compositing over that texture of the sergeant painting, it gave it kind of this warmth of the, the glaze that you put on an oil painting to preserve it. And then I can just paint on top of that, but it also gives me new colors and new color combinations to steal from. It also shows me that you can do a lot with a big brush. Especially if it's textured. Now, just like learning how to use charcoal or learning how to use um, acrylic paint or whatever kind of materials, you just have to put a lot of time in to really master it, get a feel for it. But I'm just trying to show you all the potential, why digital has something to offer in this area. And like I said, the way I'll most commonly use it in my own professional practice is as a way of getting used to reference. So if I was doing a commission, like say a dog portrait, which if you need to make money quick with art, 
do pet portraits. And they're fun to do, and people people are always looking for them. But it, before I would do like a really big uh, painting and invest a lot of money in paper and in materials, I'll do a little color study like this and just to try to find ways to make it exciting. And then I, I print it out, I put it up next to my big piece of paper and I kind of know the level of energy I'm going for. Because digital painting to me really pays off here on the screen and it's fun to share digitally and it's great to show a client your progress, but it doesn't pay off yet as a product, right? There's something more satisfying about paper or canvas as something that you pay for as an art collector than just a digital file, at least in my generation. But I still find these tools and how clean you can be painting this way. I don't have to wash my brushes or do any of that kind of thing. It's being very satisfying. It also gets me looking at a lot more art history as inspiration. Four color palettes, four compositions. Whatever you got. All right. So in about 10 minutes, I'm going to have you guys save your work and submit what you have. So I'm going to show you um, how to submit it. You're trying to, in the next 10 minutes, you're going to try to bring it all up to that level, right? So obviously, this is more worked than this. And so now I would work furiously in the next 10 minutes. Kind of a big brush. Now I kind of know what I'm going for with my level of finish. I might work at a higher opacity with a bigger brush. And just try not to be too self-critical. I've solved the big problems. Now I'm just trying to bring it all up to a level so that there are parts that just don't look, um, that don't become unintentional focal points because they're so undone compared to the rest. It doesn't mean you still can't play with some experimental color. I want to get some greens in there. On the belly. But I'm trying to be inspired by Sargent. Using this big brush with strong directions. Not Definitely not trying to draw each piece of hair, you know, for the fur, which if you zoom in and you just are working that way, you can kind of delude yourself into thinking that that's how a painting works. I've, I've seen digital artists, you know, students, not so much here, but that I've worked with that will use kind of the equivalent of two or three hair brushes and just layer it up endlessly. It's kind of a high school approach where you think you just have all the time in the world to finish something. But if you wouldn't do it with a real painting, I don't know why you would do it on the computer that way. Now, those of you interested in illustration and interested in kind of commercial art, applications of digital painting it's it's really changed art schools and now instead of life drawing on paper almost all art schools that are trying to kind of keep up with contemporary times will do at least some instruction on tablets and the big benefit of that is that the skills are transferable if you're able to do good gesture and observe shape and form and especially movement uh, correctly 
through digital.